Hello guys, in this video we're going to learn loop control instructions. First, we'll see how a CJ instruction can jump the program execution to another network. Then, we'll learn what are interrupts, and how a simple external interrupt can be created. EI and DI instructions are used to enable and disable interrupts. After that, we'll use for and next instructions to create loops inside the program. Then, we'll see how a loop can increase the scan time using a monitor table. So, sometimes, we will need to use WDT instruction to reset the scan time. Finally, we'll learn how a function can be created and used inside the program. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to inform you about all the great content, we have been releasing on the PLC Goods YouTube channel, which includes industrial automation PLC programming, HMI, and microcontroller based developments. My name is Syed Reza, and if you enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell, to receive the latest and the greatest content, I will be posting through the channel. Alright, until now, we've learned some comparison, basic, and arithmetic instructions. Now, let's see what are loop control instructions. CJ and CJP instructions make program execution jumps to another network. Note that the CJP instruction is sensitive to positive signal edges. Now, let me test the first one. As you see, this instruction has one input. Here, I must write a label, such as label 1. Now, I must use this label for a network, which the program must jump there. Now, if I activate the jump instruction in network 2, PLC will jump to network 5, and won't execute this part of my program. Let's test it. Now, all networks are executing, and I can turn on or off all outputs. Well, if I activate the CJ instruction, PLC will execute the first, and also the second network, after that, will go to the last network that has label 1. So, PLC won't execute these networks, as you see, I am not able to turn on the second LED, or turn off the third one. But the last network works correctly. Now. Let's disable the CJ instruction. Well, PLC has corrected the second and third LED status, based on these networks. Let's continue, these instructions, EI and DI, enable and disable interrupts, during the main program. An interrupt is an event that causes the controller to suspend the task it is currently performing, perform a different task, and then return to the suspended task at the point where it's suspended. Note that, PLC executes the main program continuously. It's a cyclic task. But other are interruption tasks. Let's create a new task or program as an interrupt. Well, simple interrupts are executed by digital inputs. Let me select external interruption X2. So, PLC will execute the new task for example to turn on a fan or warning light, every time the third digital input is activated by a temperature sensor or limit switch. With interrupts, we can ensure PLC will perform higher priority task immediately, especially when the main program is long and its scan time takes a long time. Let me write a simple program to turn on the third and fourth digital outputs. Now, let me create another interrupt. At this time, I select the fourth digital input. External interruption X3. 
Again, let me write another simple program. For example, turn off two previous outputs. Let me compile my project to ensure there isn't any error or warning. As you see, here are three tasks or programs. The first one is the main program. It will be executed continuously, but others can interrupt the main program execution. Now, we can use these instructions to enable or disable interrupts, or decide when the execution of the main program can be interrupted. Let me use them. Now, based on the program, I disable interrupts before the third network, and then, activate it after that. Now, let me right click on the program icon and select task priority. Here I can see all task types. For the cyclic task, this program will be executed. There isn't any program for the first and the second external interruptions. But the second and third program are considered for these external interruptions. Here, I can determine these program must be executed by the rising or falling edge signals. Now, let's test the program. This part of my program is executed continually. But I must press the first push button to run this program, which turns the third and fourth LED. Note that, for each pressing, PLC will execute this program only once time. Similarly, the next program will be executed as an interrupt, to turn off two LEDs, if I press and then release the second push button. Now, let's use for and next instructions. These two instructions are used together. For example, this part of my program will be repeated five times during each scan cycle, and this part will be repeated ten times. Naturally, if we have a complex or long program, or repeat a part of the program many times, then the scan time will take too long. Note that, there are several special data registers related to the scan time. For example, this data register has stored the maximum allowable scan time. By default its value is equal to 200 milliseconds. When the scan time exceeds the set time in this data register, the red error LED indicator remains beaconing and all outputs will be off. Note that, the present value, minimum value, and maximum value of scan time are stored in these addresses. Well, I've not used these addresses in my program. But their value can be monitored by creating a monitor table. Here, I can double click to insert any addresses, which I want to monitor its value. Now, let's compile and download the program like previous videos. Let's go to online mode. Now, let me run my PLC. Okay, the current scan time is very short, about 3 or 5 milliseconds. Because my program is simple and short. Note that, memories can be changed by this table. Now, let's increase loops iteration, and see its result on the scan time. Now. Networks 2 and 5 are executing thousand times during each scan cycle. As you can see, the scan time has increased to 65 milliseconds. Note that, this value must be less than the stored time on this special memory. If the scan time is too long, there are three ways to solve it. The best way is to modify the program, to decrease the scan time. Otherwise, we can change the stored number in this memory with a simple move instruction. Or inside the program, we can use WDT, watchdog timer instruction. For example, 
assume the scan time of the program is 300 milliseconds, I can divide the program into two parts, and place WDT instruction in the middle of the two parts, it makes the scan time of the first half and second half of the program being less than 200 milliseconds. Alright, until now, we have learned these instructions and also how an interrupt can be created, to have better control on our program. Another technique is using functions. A program can be divided into several parts and wrote in several functions. Then, we will need to call desired functions inside the main program. Assume my process has two modes. Manual and automatic. I can write each mode programs inside a function. Now, let me write a simple program to turn on my four LEDs manually, inside the created function. Now, let's create another function, to write the automatic program part. So, let me add the auto word to its name. First, in this function, let me use a timer, which activated every 10 seconds. Now, after the timer, let me use comparison instructions to compare the timer time with desired times, to turn on 4 LEDs sequentially. Now, let's back to the main program to call and use two created functions. Let me use my first switch, to start the auto, or manual function. Now, let me compile and download the program. Now, I enable the online mode, and run my PLC. As you can see, by default, the auto function has been selected to turn on 4 LEDs automatically. Let me use the first switch to select the manual mode. Now, I can turn on each LED manually. Alright, let me use the help window, to say my last point in this video. Okay, in this video, We've used loop instructions inside the main program, and also, how interrupts, or function blocks can be used. I've used this diagram, which displays the relationship between the main program, interrupts, and function blocks. Note that, WPL Soft, the older software to program Delta PLCs, uses another structure. As you see, in this software, interrupts, and function blocks must be added to the end of the main program, there isn't any individual block for them, such as the right structure. Thanks for watching. In the next video, 
we'll continue this tutorial with transmission comparison instructions. Thanks for watching my content, if you have any question on this topic make sure you leave them in the comment section below, and if you can spend a few seconds of your time liking as well as sharing this video, if you enjoyed it, that will mean a lot to me. If you have any suggestions for the channel such as what kind of hardware or software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that in the comment section. See you next time. Bye bye.